going to be able to have endless growth when you no longer have cheap oil because it's not just that oil uh, is no longer cheap financially. Uh, we need to talk about the the uh, return on energy that mm -hmm. uh, oil brings mm -hmm. or the, the alternatives to oil. Now cheap oil in this country once fetched 100 to 1. You put mm -hmm. one barrel oil equivalent into the extraction pr uh, process, you got 100 back. Well, uh, new wells in this country are, are, are getting to be a wash. You get the same amount of energy back. So if, mm -hmm. you, if you think about, well, energy is energy, we're just going to switch to other forms of energy. Well, it doesn't really work that way because if, if you have to put just as much energy in or more energy in than you get out, yeah. that's a problem. Yeah, and right. also petroleum, you get all these materials. <clears throat> right. you know, you're not going to get farm chemicals out of solar panels. You know, I did a, I did a calculation I was, uh, when, when the Iraq war was, <clears throat> you know, maybe three years, we were three years into it, you know, and I, I had some notion that how much it was going to cost. Now I realize I was way short, but I was figuring $600 billion. <clears throat> and I, I, I thought, how would it be if we took all that money that we're spending on a war and, in, and invested it instead in renewable energy? So I decided PV panels. So I, I thought PV panels. Like, if we just paid market price, just for the simplicity for this uh, calculation, if we took 60, 600, $600 billion and bought PV panels, just assuming we could put it up somewhere, put them up, how much electricity would that supply? Because I was able to find what our annual electricity consumption is and how much that would supply. You want to guess how much that would be? How close it was would be to our consumed electricity? Well, you'd have to have an area the size of France uh, covered with panels. Uh, I've heard that. Okay, well, just do, do, this is $600 billion. This is this. If we had $600 billion, I'll, 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 I'll save you the agony of guessing. All right. Because I'm that kind of guy. <clears throat> it would give you one over twenty thousand. It would be one twenty thousandths of the annual electric electric electricity consumption that we now are. Total energy or total electric? Total electricity, total electricity consumption. And that's that's not even cars. That's just like well, peak oil has been described as a liquid fuel price uh, crisis, and and that's really something to keep in mind when we think about uh, wind generators, mm -hmm. uh, solar panels, and so forth. Yeah, and these I but would, one over twenty thousand is that's is a is very a, small. That's a tiny number. That's not even a fraction <laughs> of a percentage. That, that's true fasting. Yeah, it's true fasting, <laughs> but. You know, we're talking here the different possible scenarios of how society is going to collapse. And the reality is whether we go off the cliff, whether we have these little bursts and, and so forth and end down, it really doesn't matter because in the end we're going to be there anyways. And I think we do ourselves and society a very disservice of not saying, folks, here's a plan, here's a controlled descent of what we can do to prepare for that and to begin to mitigate the effects of that. Not to throw any cold water on this, Jeff, but uh, oh, don't hold back. a study of, of peak oil for the Department of Energy mm -hmm. conducted by, uh, what's Bob's last name? Uh, Reinhardt. Um, it was the report. Yeah, which we call it? Uh, yeah. We all know about it. Yep. The Schmeck report. Yeah. The, uh, well, uh, it'll come to me. What what was uh, what was found is that you have to prepare for peak oil decades in advance sure. to really uh, uh, avoid uh, the the severe economic and we effects. and we have not yeah. and we have not uh, right. You, so you need two decades to prepare without any disruption. You need a decade with um, moderate disruption. And we have not. And we have not. So now we're looking so at So the idea disruption. of cleaner cars being the, uh, the solution is completely uh, No, I'm not saying cleaner false. cars. I, I'm saying I didn't say you did say that. Yeah, but I'm saying we're at a point now that, as I commonly tell people, the car will not be a part of a long-term solution. Well, it was Bob Hirsch. Uh, yeah, Hirsch Robert Hirsch. The Hirsch report. That was good. Yeah, the Bob sh threw me off when you said uh, Robert. Robert, you, Again, Robert would, have, would have brought it right up. Brought it right back, yeah. Hirsch report. But you know him on, on a Bob basis, don't you? 
you know, he said to me, you can call I worked for the oil industry 10 years and never heard of peak oil. <laughs> and so this is the way it is. I remember uh, that comment. And also that report sat on some server at some high school for a year before it got out to the public. Yeah, that's right. Um, <clears throat> now let's, uh, it's now that we've uh, <clears throat> whipped our audience into such a, a frenzy of gloom, um, what, what, what can we do? What, what do you think that we can do to begin to, as individuals, because it looks like our government is, uh, on the larger scale, is not going to do much for us. We need to think for ourselves and take action. Okay. Those are very tall orders in our culture these days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, both of those, I agree. And if people don't want to address that, people think, oh yeah, peak oil's real, but I have to buy another car. I don't see any point in discussing it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it is possible to live with much less energy consumption, to live a better life. Fewer material possessions, spending less money, having more personal time. So that's, uh, that's the joy of uh, you know, growing your own food, uh, having a real community. Mm -hmm. Restoring skills that are being lost. And when you say skills, you're talking about like <clears throat> you're not talking about computer programming, are you? Afraid not. Well, what are you talking about? Let's well, we talked about making shoes. Shoes. Uh, the, the, so we're we're, we're the, talking the, about the, the real cobblers aren't uh, <clears throat> out there anymore. Or how about skilled craftsmen? How about masons, brick mm -hmm. masons? How about mm -hmm. um, people who can do woodworking? Yeah, it's 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 going by the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sailors, uh, we were talking about that the other day. Uh, sail making is hardly happening in this country anymore. It's happening in Taiwan. It's made of a petroleum product called Dacron. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, skills are everywhere in, 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 in the entire sphere of human activity. Taking care of health, uh, growing food, uh, raising our children, taking care of the elders uh, for elders to have a role in, in educating the young. But we've thrown all this away in favor of working harder, working faster to get more stuff. So what do you say to the person who says, I've got to work two jobs because of these insane economic policies. Um, they're working two jobs that are paying them maybe $10 an hour and they're working 60 hours a week. They're living in a um, rent subsidized apartment. They're getting food stamps. And you're telling them, now I've got to learn how to live a low energy future? What do you well, say we, to that we, person? We would have to look at uh, what they're doing. A lot of people say, oh, I can't do anything. I, 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 I don't have uh, the money to do anything. I have to do this, I have to do mm -hmm. that. But when you start analyzing it, you find that uh, they're not taking advantage of, of things that would uh, help them in their lives. They may be making decisions that, that are very foolish, uh, that involve uh, a long, unnecessary commute. Uh, they assume they need a car when they might be able to do without the car. Mm -hmm. They may not be recycling whatsoever. They may not be eating fresh food. They may not have a garden to grow it, but are they doing sprouts in their kitchen? Mm, good point. No. Mm -hmm. Are they doing That's composting great. to build up any soil mm -hmm. so that the little patch of ground outside the apartment house can turn into a veggie garden? No. Mm -hmm. Now, when this becomes essential and that parking lot will be depaved for uh, uh, a nice vegetable garden, then uh, this is going to happen when we don't have the free-flowing petroleum. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a very small minority of people interested in the future mm -hmm. and having a better present. Okay, <clears throat> we have less than two minutes left in the show. Um, so are, are there any closing comments that you'd like to make, um, uh, like your website or, or any, any other words that you'd like to, to mention? Well, Jeff has a great website, some great uh, videos on there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Listentome.com. No, dot .us. Dot .us. Listentome.us. Okay. It's an Arabic numeral too, folks. Listen. To me. You've also got culturechange.org. Culturechange.org. Uh, it formerly was known as the Alliance for a Paving Moratorium. Mm -hmm. We put out the Auto Free Times magazine. <coughs> and unfortunately, we are so close, so, yep. so out of time, you're going to have to come back and sing your song for us. 
Ooh, Be glad yeah. to lay some eco rock on you. Okay, well we're we're gonna we're gonna want to listen to some of that eco rock. So we have about one more minute. 